Davidson in Hanover, and since then we now have offices in Lancaster, New York, and Gettysburg. at infrastructure today from a lot of different angles. Uh, we have three presenters. Uh, I just want to kind of set that up a little bit so you understand why we chose who we chose and, and what we're going to try to talk about today. Uh, the first presenter is a little self-serving for us, but it again is the theme that we want to provide products for you as municipalities that help you do your job. Um, it's a software package that we've put together and I'm, I'm not going to try to steal Chris Toms' thunder, but He's going to talk to you about a software package we think is, is right on line with what you need as municipalities. So we're hoping that that will help you as an asset management tool. Chris Toms has been with our company for many years and the reason he's going to stand up here and talk to you and the reason that he was integral in putting together this software package I just talked about is his interaction both as an engineer of record with municipalities in York and, Lancaster, or, yeah, York and Gettysburg. Um, and then beyond that, he had the opportunity to work with the National Park Service in uh, Gettysburg in evaluating their road networks and how they could best deal with the roads within their park service and the money that they had. And in doing so, what he realized was a lot of the tools that he generated and worked with them to, to make those decisions were directly relevant to the work that we do with municipalities. And I think you can see that connection. Uh, so we think we had an innate ability to be able to tie those two issues together and to try to put a package together that will work directly for you at whatever level uh, that you want to work with it on. So that said, I'm going to turn, turn the mic over to, to Chris to, to put together our first presentation. The one correction to John Kleinens, he said all day, I promise we're going to have you out by three. It's a beautiful day and we don't want to hold you any longer than that. So Chris. Okay, I'm just going to try to give you today a simple presentation on asset management, specifically infrastructure asset management. Talk about the what, what is asset management, why, why would you develop asset management plans, and how to create a plan. And I'm going to emphasize five steps throughout the presentation. An inventory of your assets, an assessment of their condition, a determination of the needs, an assessment of your finances, and finally, the development of a budgeted plan. We'll discuss somewhat the benefits of having such a plan. And then, as Jeff said, I'll introduce you to the Excel-based uh, tool that we've created for you. I'll start with the definition. There are plenty of definitions to choose from for infrastructure asset management. I chose this one because it emphasizes three points I wanted to address. I'll just read it quickly. It's an ongoing process of maintaining, upgrading, and operating physical assets cost effectively based on a continuous physical inventory and condition assessment. First point I want to address is physical assets. You all manage a number of assets. Here's just a sample of some of them. Um, roads will be the focus of this presentation, but many of you with MS4s are dealing with storm sewers, basins. You also may have water and sewer. Second point, then I want to address this cost effective. If this process isn't cost effective, why would you do it? Um, as your assets continue to age, a gap is probably developing between your, your ability to maintain those assets. That cost to maintain them is probably increasing faster than inflation. And then the funds you're receiving to do that operation and maintenance may not be providing enough money that you need for uh, capital replacement. I want to give a very simple hypothetical to address that point. Imagine a municipality has 15 roads that are all a mile long. At the end of a 15-year design life, I know I've used 15 with this. At the end of a 15-year design life, it say it costs 15 bucks a square yard to refurbish that road. And this is where it gets really hypothetical. Imagine that you adopted one of those roads each year, consecutive years. So at the end of each year, a road hits the end of its design life and you have to outlay those funds to replace or refurbish that road. That's gonna cost about a little over $200,000 per mile or per year. And liquid fuels funds turn back money for a municipality that has 15 miles of road, probably doesn't amount to that. So you may be searching for other funds and, or also ask, do you have enough money budgeted to ad address these capital replacements? 
third point I wanted to address is that it's a continuous physical inventory of conditions and assessments. Later on, I'll address various methods in which you could do these assessments. But my point is that it is, it's something that has to continue to go on and on. Um, you can't just do a single assessment and let it sit on the shelf. So going back to the gap that I addressed previously, current situation is for a lot of municipalities that they began with a set of assets. Uh, over decades of development, they acquired more and more assets. And then budgets began to tighten. And as always, there's pressure to, to cut spending. So it, and this isn't just roads, but it leaves you at a point of trying to decide how to best allocate those limited funds that you have. So you might be at a point where, again, you have significant assets, they're aging, you have less and less money to do so. But I'd point out that you're at the forefront of replacing those assets that people use every single day. What happens if you don't? And I'll read from an ASCE report. Deteriorating infrastructure, long known to be a public safety issue, has a cascading impact on the nation's economy, negatively affecting business productivity, gross domestic product, employment, personal income, and international competitiveness. My point is that it's not just about sewer backups and potholes. We're talking about the costs, not just your costs, industry in your area, your residents. We're talking about the safety um, of your residents and generally their quality of life. So now how would you pay for these improvements? Reliance on grants may not be sufficient. Um, the timing of such grants and the total allocation are not going to address your needs. So you need to find ways to save money while maintaining your assets at a desired level of service, both quality and safety. The this graph comes from the Federal Highways Administration, and while it does pertain to roads, that's, the concepts are similar to other assets. During the early stages of the life of that asset, preventive maintenance and small repairs at relatively smaller cost can maintain that asset um, for a longer period of time, delaying future replacement costs. That's a squiggly line up at the top. If you don't do that, as the asset ages, deteriorates quickly, and then the cost to bring that back up to a desired level of condition can be significant relative to had it been treated early on. It's easy when a road is in good condition or any other asset to not spend any money on it. But as you can see, if you delay that decision to do that maintenance, the cost can increase substantially. The next slide, I recognize the numbers are small. That's almost by design, because we could debate the timing of treatments and the cost of treatments. But I more want you to focus on the colors. On the left is one design scenario where you take the design life of a road. Here I use just over 20 years. And the method of maintaining that road there is to let it reach the end of its design life, completely reconstruct it, let it run to the end of its design life again. Green would be excellent, blue good, yellow fair, and uh, red poor. On the right is an example of um, preventative maintenance treatments, be it a surface treatment, a mill and overlay, scheduled at different times, every six years throughout the life of this road. The costs in this example are nearly identical, and actually for the preventative maintenance example on the right, the costs are slightly less. When applied out over an entire road network, those savings can be substantial. But more importantly, notice that on the left, that road is in poor, poor condition for 40% of its time. If you can maintain the base of a road well and continue to address the surface condition, you can keep the road in that good, excellent condition while spending the same or possibly even saving money. So I've addressed what asset management is and why you may want to do it. Next thing is how. Your first step is to have buy-in from all the parties involved. Um, these plans become excellent paperweights if there's no buy-in. Um, I go back to the definition, the words like ongoing, maintaining, continuous. It requires an effort throughout the life of this plan and beyond to, to stick with this methodology, which may be a paradigm shift from what you're currently doing. 
So go back to the steps I talked about at the beginning. The inventory, whether it's streets, storm sewer, sanitary sewer, just, you need to know what you have out there. Next, you have to assess the condition of those assets and develop a rating. Third, determine the needs, and this is where you create cost estimates for all your repairs. Fourth is a reality check, where you assess all those repairs against the finances you have. And fifth, you develop that plan. So starting with inventory, you may have existing maps, you may have reports, you may have all the information in the heads of the brains of the staff that you have. It'd be great to get that on paper. You may have as built. In the case of signs and culverts, you may actually have to go out to each of those and measure them. Or maybe you're fortunate enough to already have everything in a GIS. Now from here on out, I'm going to sprinkle in screenshots of the tool that we've developed so it becomes familiar to you. After I'm done over lunch, uh, we'll be glad to give you a demo uh, of the software. As far as the inventory step, the way we've set this up is if you input your, your county and your municipality, your roads list will come in and autofill. Um, you could split those roads up into workable segments, add roads if you needed to, but we've tried to make that step as easy as we can. The next step again is to assess the condition. As I've said earlier, there are multiple methods in which you could assess the condition of your roadways. Plenty of them are published, whatever suits you. Some are uh, subjective, where you're estimating condition, others objective, where you're actually making measurements. Subjective methods are generally cheaper, they're faster. You need to be careful though that if you have multiple people doing that, that they're trained so that one person's rating of a seven isn't another person's rating of a five. One resource is a pavement surface evaluation and rating system. This is a, a published document where you rate a road from one to 10. There are pictures of what each rating is. There's a picture of what a seven is with a general description. Some municipalities take that and they boil it down from one to five to make it a little easier. Many just conduct that with windshield surveys. Uh, I recently read a study from Illinois where they in, uh, interviewed 68 agencies that had pavement management plans, and 70% of them did those with windshield surveys. So again, it's just the collection of data to use and help you in making decisions. But should you choose to have a more objective method, which is gonna allow you to do more data analysis over time, where you're truly gonna measure the distresses and evaluate one treatment against another treatment to see which is best in certain situations, you, you may want to go with something more objective. It will be more expensive. It'll take more time, but it can be replicated because you're measuring that data. If you recall the graph that I showed you previously, you may have noticed on the left-hand side there was a rating from zero to 100 called PCI. That's the Pavement Condition Index. That's a system developed by the Army Corps, adopted by AT, pardon me, APWA, and there are ASTM standards for it. In that system, you would evaluate multiple distresses. Each stress is then, pardon me, distress is added as a deduction, and you add up all those deductions and subtract from a score from 100, and that's your rating. What we've tried to do is take the subjective methods, but then also take that evaluation of distresses from the more objective methods and marry them together a bit in what we've developed. The way we've set it up is you'll evaluate five different distresses, three types of cracking, alligator, longitudinal, and transverse, rutting, and patching. Those five are um, then rated as none, low, medium, and high based upon guidelines we provide. And then a score is given to that road or road segment. And that score would just be excellent, good, fair, or poor. But then to evaluate what's gonna happen to that road over your next planning period, or had you input data on three causes of distress, the age of the pavement, the drainage situation, and the traffic. Those three, again, are rated based on guidelines we provide, and they develop a maintenance priority. So the older the road, the poorer the drainage, the higher the traffic, the faster that road will deteriorate down to the next condition. And so again, you'll rate those, and the output will be a, a priority rating.
Once you've completed all of the condition assessments, the program will present the data in multiple ways. Summary is broken down by type of road, age of roads, traffic, but then also a road by road breakdown where again in the second column you can see what the condition rating is and the last column um, the actual maintenance priority. A priority rating of one is the road that you want to get to the soonest and, and five one is least likely to deteriorate quickly. We've also added a Google Earth component to the software that should you input latitudes and longitudes, you can have the output of a map, again color coded, same colors I talked about earlier, blue excellent, uh, green good, yellow fair, red is poor. And you can use that in communicating with residents and elected officials as to what you know, the current status of your road network is. Another option would be to take that data and incorporate it into your GIS and you know, could color code that and then track that over time to see how the roadways improve, roadway network. The third step that I discussed was determining the needs. And I call this an unrestricted plan because it's as if you had all the money to fix all the problems you had in your road network. Same concept applies for other assets. In this case with roads, you'll use some judgment if paving and pavement preservation methods to determine what prescriptions are necessary to bring that road up to your desired level of service. With that, you'll develop some budgetary cost estimates. And we provided a page where there are a variety of options and you could change the unit cost, but then you can also, on the right hand side, add other treatments. I recognize this is probably a little difficult to read, but what you then can do is select a number of treatments for each road. Um, and then we've even added a non-pavement repair. So you want to repair all the curb along that road, you can incorporate that cost. And so now you've developed an estimate to repair all of the roads present day based upon the assessment that you've completed. The fourth step can be an iterative step where you assess the finances that you have. You've, you know what money you need to repair everything, how much money you have right now, what other opportunities are out there. Once you develop the plan, you may want to go back to the finances and you know, adjust to see what other monies you have available. But in developing the budgeted plan, once you've settled in on the funding that you have available, now is where you make the determination of which roads you'll fix, or if it's any other asset, you know, which components you'll fix over the next few years. We've given you some priority ranking metrics with traffic, age, and drainage. You may have hazardous areas you need to replace. Based upon resident input, there may be rep other repairs that you need, want to do. But this is the point where you've coordinated all the efforts that you've done to date with the assessment, the estimates, the priorities, and your finances, and you've created a living document. With this document, once you implement it, you want to track you know, what you've done, what your costs were, and as necessary, change the plan. Um, but what I think is important that should you make any change, document why, because someone will follow behind you and that information could be very valuable to them. This is the interface that we've set up for creating that plan. In the, in the main body, you'll see what the conditions of the roads were and the maintenance priority that was developed. And then the cost that was developed. And then you'll select the year in which you want to perform the activity and we've set it up so it can apply an inflationary factor if you feel that's necessary. And or you can just select to do nothing during that five year planning period. In the upper corner you'll see where it tracks the budget you have and the repairs you've selected to see where you stand year to year and if maybe you need to not do any work for a year to save up for other larger repairs coming down the pipe. So briefly, I'll go over some general benefits of developing a plan like this or using any other system that works well for you. Your budget planning year to year can be much easier. Um, you can simply just look at the plan and pull those numbers off. But the other thing is if in that year you're not doing any work, but you know that you need to save that money, the plan is a justification that you need to set that money aside. Rather than others trying to reallocate that you know, to other projects, you know that if 
if you don't save that money, then that repair project scheduled for the next year might ha happen. So having the plan and having everybody bought into that process can help make sure that you stay on track. Another benefit is coordination of utilities. Should you have a, a street cut ordinance where you may have a degradation fee you know, to try and prevent new cut or cuts into newer roads, um, if you have a plan and it's updated well enough, you can share that with the utilities and perhaps waive that fee if they schedule their, their repairs to occur just before yours. We've seen a lot of success with this, but what it's meant is the plan continually needs to be updated, so two years out, that information can be shared with the utilities. Another benefit, um, communication with residents, also elected officials. Um, you can always demonstrate, like, here's the work that's going to be done and when it's going to be done, and you can all use that plan to help justify your answers about that project in, in their front yard that they're interested in. Another benefit is that if you show a commitment to stick to the plan and continue to reassess and through mapping or other means show the progress that you've made, I think that will, would go a long way in justifying the money spent in developing the plan. This is just a brief example of one plan that was developed just a couple years ago, but municipalities shared this information at meetings showing that just in two years how the roads in excellent condition have jumped up and they're continuing to get away at, or eat away at those that are in fair and poor condition. So what we're interested in with them is over the next decade to see how that, that pie chart can be maintained you know, keep the percentages in excellent and good condition over time. So I zipped through that pretty fast, but I just wanted to go over that this is the general, this is the first interface you're going to see in our, our Excel-based program, and we'll be glad to sit down with you and give you a demo and show you how it works. What's next for us is we want to take this and make it a web-based GIS platform where not only roads but other assets could be included. For now, we'd appreciate it if you just give our beta version a try, let us know what you think, and we'll try to continue to develop tools for you to make your job easier. The packets that were handed out as you entered the room actually have a write-up on PAVE software that he just went over. Uh, there's, a, there's a scan on there that will take you directly to this download and you can download it. It's at this point, as he said, it's a beta, it's a beta tested version. We're, we're offering this to any municipality that wants to start to work on this. Uh, I just highlight a couple things that I want to make sure everybody's understood from what Chris just said. The, um, when you go into your county, your municipality, your roads will automatically download based on your liquid fuels list. So that information will automatically populate. So that at least will be done for you. A lot of the input here is, is your responsibility to put in or would be your responsibility to put in. But again, play with this. I think it's a, it's a nice tool to get started if you haven't already done so. And I think it would be something that would benefit your municipality. So um, the other thing, Jordan, can you raise your hand over here? Jordan Good from our office was involved with generating the, the software for this. And he has a, a tablet that he would be more than glad to work one-on-one -on -one so you can actually see how this interacts in the tablet form uh, in the room today at any point during a break or over lunch. See him and he'll be glad to walk you through that.